And welcome to Let Em Talk. I'm Paul Dirienzo, and we got another great live show for you today. Uh, my guest is uh, artist and teacher Minerva Durham, and uh, so glad to have you on. And, Thank uh, you. Um, I'm glad to be here. Good, glad to have you. And uh, we're going to talk about art in your art school and, and what you do. And uh, um, and I have friends who study with you, and I have friends who pose for you. Oh, as really? Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, my friend Barbara. You know, she Barbara Lee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, how wonderful. Very old friend of mine. And yeah, uh, 25 and years with me. Oh, really? 25. years? I started 25 years ago, and my she was mind. one of the first models. Well, now I have to have her on. I have to show. Oh, you'll have to have her on. She's I, wonderful. She right. loves my writing. I love. I okay. love everything about her. Right, right. Oh, so I'm, I, I've known Barb for a long time. And, uh, and of course, uh, um, uh, Susan Young, who was on the show. Susan Young, who does She videos. was on the show, yeah, and she comes in and is a beautiful Great artist. Great artist, oh, beautiful yeah. watercolors. I love her work, yes. yes. And, uh, and so uh, actually it was uh, Susan talking about you and uh, who, who said brought me by your studio to see it and it was great to see people uh, drawing. Oh, that's right. I remember I came you came by. in one day just for right. a second. Right. right, right, right. Over on Spring Street. Now, um, how long you, how long have you been doing this? Like well, at, at Spring Street? Actually, location? I had been teaching at Parsons and I had a disagreement with the administrators over my perquisites and I told them I could no longer work for them. So mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. And everyone said, you're a great teacher. Why don't you teach? And I remembered uh, when I was leaving in December mm -hmm. at the end of the first semester, I remembered that I had always wanted to have a figure drawing studio. Uh -huh. And I had a big enough paycheck for the year, uh, you know, like ten or $15,000 or something sure. really big for me. And so I decided I would start in the building where I had a small studio at 300 a month. I would get a larger studio and open up to the public to come and draw the figure. So okay. I did that with no plan really in mind mm -hmm. other than to just have, mm -hmm. well I was going to have seven days a week in the beginning, right. but not enough people came so I reduced it some, but very soon thereafter I began to have seven days a week, three times a day, oh, wow. around the clock, around the year round, figure drawing. And one of the reasons I needed to do that is that of the existing people who drew in New York, mm -hmm. uh, they were already committed to other places. So if I were open when there were holidays, other places, or like I Monday see. holidays sure. and uh, vacation days, they might come to me. So Great some idea. of my best artists came when the league would take a break or something like that. I see. So, but so you uh, basically, I mean, you don't your your artists don't aren't drawing pictures of still lives. They're oh no, every class has a live nude model except for one portrait class where mm -hmm. we have two clothes models oh, really? and, and a teacher. And then you just do the face, the portrait. We draw the face, or, or yeah. they can draw the whole body sitting there with the clothes on and off. Mm -hmm. but, um, and we have seven sessions of, with instruction. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting because traditionally a lot of artists who consider themselves to be professional do not want to go to a class mm -hmm. where there's an instructor. Right. But I try to make my lectures entertaining enough and they're on the five minute breaks. The sure. models will work 20 minutes, five minute break. 20 minutes, five minute break. Do they have to hold that pose for 20 minutes? Well, I like the short poses. I they see. do exciting. Maybe I should tell you now why I do the figure because. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I was wanting to get to that. Yeah, I was well, actually, that I wrote a piece about that, but my mother had uh, been taken to Europe in 1928 by her uncle, mm -hmm. and he was uh, puritanical, Huguenot descent, whereas her mother, her own mother was French, Irish Catholic, and uh, the sort of sense of fertility in the family and mm -hmm. sensuality was strong from her mother, yeah. but from her father's side, there was a kind of puritanical element, not mm -hmm. my specific grandfather, but from his family. Right. So. The uncle had taken her to Paris and they walked into the Rodin Museum and my mother felt that she was in heaven looking at all the bodies. Right. And Rodin was, was a great sculptor and his oh yeah. sculptures were mostly in bronze, I would imagine. Or well, also there were the drawings that he did oh late in life that were very uh, sensual. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, he was interested in motion and pain and sure. uh, excitement. Uh, mm -hmm. 
uh, and a kind of uh, transitional forms. Right. And you can see them at the, uh, here in New York, if you go, I oh, guess, to the Metropolitan Museum Metro of Art. They have Rodin's there, right? They the have. I think they have the Burgers of Calais, even, which are okay. very exciting. So I think folks can follow this up and, and yeah, go there so and actually see this art. Anyway, he said, no niece of mine is going to look at these naked bodies <laughs> and pulled her out of the museum. And they were fully naked. I mean, like every element of their yes, genitalia yeah, and everything was everything done in there. detail. So when I grew I have two older sisters who never heard the story. I heard the story all the time from my mother, I yeah. thought. They yeah. just zoned it out. But I heard this story, oh, how horrible. Uncle Clausen took me out of the Rodin Museum. I didn't get to see these things when I was 18 years old. So I think that I'm consciously mm -hmm. and unconsciously uh, fulfilling my mother's Right. dashed expectations. Right. I, sometimes I, you know, it's funny because as a journalist, you know, mm -hmm. my mom was a housewife in the 50s and she uh -huh. had, had dreams in the early 50s of being a journalist. So she oh, wound no. up having four kids. <laughs> and and I became the journalist in the family. Of you know, course. So. You, and, and no right, one else right. heard her and stories. And my dad always says, you're your mother's uh, son. You know. Well, actually, my if father. If I followed my dad, I'd be an engineer. Right? My yeah. father was a writer and I never wanted to write. Yeah. But all of a sudden, five or six years ago, I began to write and mm -hmm. actually, you can read my writings on yeah. the website MinervaSoho.com. Oh, right. And let's tell, because uh, you're having an, an, an open house, basically. An open house this Sunday and the next Sunday. That's August 27th and September 3rd. But people who come have to RSVP. Okay. And do you have an email address? That they Spring can? Studio at Earthlink.net. Spring Studio, Studio at, at Earthlink.net. They can just look yeah. up Minerva figure drawing, because... Right, that's on, on the internet. I'm uh, Google, Google Minerva. Yeah. It's nude well models. Minerva, nude models, nude drawing. And Broom Street, 293 Figure. Broom Street. But I do have to know who's coming because our building is an old building and uh, we mm -hmm. can't have too many people. <laughs> right, right. In here. Well, <laughs> you want to know who's coming first, right? Lower East Side, Chinatown right. building. Right. And uh, we have to. We so if so I've been there. It's a fairly large room. It's like the central room here, and uh -huh. and there's a, a raised platform in the middle, and the artists sit around yes. in chairs and benches and stuff, and, and they easels and yeah, they have the easels and everything. Yes. And Do they usually use a, a drawing or charcoal or uh, painting? In instructed or? classes charcoal, but uh, they have a, a choice of anything that's non toxic. But yeah. actually, I want to get back to yeah. my having started at two two five Lafayette, where I had a small studio. Right. And Lafayette, this all Lower Manhattan, and it, spring, it, what's today called Lafayette. NoHo, and, and yes, this kind the of Soho. edge of Soho. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I think you stop on the uh, west side of Lafayette, Soho, and, and you have roots in that neighborhood, as I do. Before anybody wanted to live there, when nobody wanted to live there, it seems. Well, all of my friends wanted to live there because yeah, the right. rents were so cheap. <laughs> yeah, and they just they couldn't have lived anywhere else. Right, right. Except maybe right. the Lower East Side. Right. So anyway, I, I started the studio, but. The rent for the larger room was too much for me, so I was soon uh, behind, mm -hmm. and I was being evicted. Yeah. So my friend Virginia Admiral, who had organized 226 Lafayette as artist live workspaces, said, you have to come to the basement, which was 900 a month at the time. That was uh, 1994. Mm -hmm. sure. Right. 900 a month. Well, over the years, it went up to 2,500. <laughs> But so this is so is a, this is a side issue about artists in New York and why they're leaving like crazy right. and can't afford to be here because what used to be three, four, or five, six hundred, nine hundred for a large studio is today. Well, yeah, over twenty three years it went up to two thousand five hundred, which which was manageable. Yeah, but the building itself could realize the landlord's thought, who were artists. They were actually artists in in the artist live work building. The, la the landlords thought they could realize one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month, so they could go from twenty yes. five hundred. So after going, taking well, my many basement years, was twenty five hundred. Upstairs right. was maybe about thirty five thousand. I see, and then 40, th they wanted to bring it up to one hundred fifty thousand. Oh yeah, a month. And yeah, because Spring Natural Restaurant had been there for thirty years mm -hmm. and had gone up in increments every ten years yeah, and. Right, yeah. The, the last 10 emerged. years yeah. had seen such a rise in real estate right. that Spring Natural had to leave. Uh, so this is like sort of commercial rent thing where we're talking now. Yeah, about the ground floor. Yeah, well, the you know, the whole floor. idea of loft development was, uh, the McCunis idea was that the artists would own a floor each starting mm -hmm. with the second floor. Right. And they would commonly own the ground floor and that would provide the 
money for the taxes and improvements yes. and maintenance. What happened with that plan? How come it failed? Did it fail? Oh, did that plan fail? Everywhere yeah. it failed because, well, first of all, people coming in with money uh, don't really want that kind of a plan. Mm -hmm. But I think it failed because people got greedy. And as the property went up, a lot of artists sold way too soon, like mm -hmm. for 300000 or something. Well, they thought that was a lot of money. They thought it was a lot then. So right. any, what happened in my building is that uh, my friend Virginia had died in 2000, and she said, keep Minerva in the basement. But she didn't write anything. Mm -hmm. And like all intentions, you know, they... Right, a verbal agreement is worth the papers printed on. Right, in New York State, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So the time came that the restaurant was leaving, and they gave me a lease. My last lease was the same as, and it terminated the same as the restaurant, so they asked me to leave also. So they had all the property to themselves in December a year and a half ago, and they thought that they would have, I think Citibank come in at 150000 but Citibank didn't come in, and then they thought they'd have um, Club Monaco for 180000 and Club Monaco would build... A month. Yeah, a month, and they would build an elevator up and down. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen, so they ended up with nothing but a pop-up, and now they have something I shouldn't go into all this. It doesn't matter because what's really important is the art. And right. what's really important is that... How have you survived this insanity? Well, how did I survive? I looked for property in that neighborhood. and I soon found out, you know, I'm a socialist and I don't save money and I don't want to own property and I spend all of my life teaching yeah. and running things and sure. uh, devoted to my, what I call my business, which is actually a, a calling. Okay. Yeah. To so teach art. To I teach, teach figure drawing. teach figure drawing and keep them. Mm -hmm. Are you going to show us fi figure drawing? Oh, I don't have any to show you, but I want to draw something for oh, you. Oh, that would be but great. But I have to find my right, right. charcoal. No, go, Can you go, go in there and find I'll the I'll be charcoal. happy to find it for so you. Why don't you, while I'm doing that, why don't you tell me, oh, here's your charcoal right oh, here, right? Oh, there's my charcoal. There you That's go. Great. great. Is that it? All right. Yeah. Go. So, so, um, um, so what happened was I, the real estate people said to me, mm -hmm. I, let's see your financials. So I showed my bank account. And the real estate man said, these are not financials. This is just your bank account. Because <laughs> I, I was taking in like, two right. uh, what, 200000 a year or something like that. But what, it, what they needed was $200,000 frozen for me to get a, any place in New York. You needed that as collateral? Uh, or uh, yeah, or needed to have guarantors. Well, no one yeah. wanted to guarantee. Yeah. So I, had, I knew some rich people, and I sort of begged them, would they guarantee? And they said, well, I'd rather not. I'd, I'll give you something. So yeah. I raised about $80,000, which was a lot. Right, right. And so I people wanted to keep your, you they in business. Want, oh, of course they wanted to keep me going. Yeah, the they got their models for it. They, yeah, they yeah. got time to draw. Right. And sometimes they got inspiration and oh, teaching. These are so people who, were, who actually come as students to learn. Oh, yeah. And some, some of them, them, I mean, many yeah. were poor people who had nothing, right. but a couple of them had some money. Right. So, and then... I got enough money to move and pay, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say what I'm paying for rent, but to pay half a year's rent in advance, which is what my new landlord, right. own, owner of the building with whom I share the space, uh, he needed the money up front for it to, to have confidence in me because right. I couldn't freeze any money. I so had no how money do you raise me. this money every, every six months? Well, the next, well, I have a lot of old work I've never sold. Uh -huh. So that's the part oh, of what... Oh, you're selling your work as an oh, artist. Oh, yeah, I sold three paintings oh, good. at about 10000 each. I had to establish a price. It's not much. Yeah. They're good paintings, too. Right. But, you know, you can go online once again and see some of my work. All right. But I wanted to give you an example of how I draw. Okay. But I'm going to look at you, but I'm not really going to draw you. All right. But I, when I draw, I, I can do it this way. Yeah, so do it that way so we can see it on the screen. But yeah. When I draw, yeah, we can see I, when I teach, I teach a system, not like, this is my own system of finding uh, sort of ovoid shapes for the eyes yeah. and the tip of the nose. And I, I did this uh, not realizing, uh, I've done this for years, I didn't realize that this is what they do on Facebook and uh -huh all the places where it says, who, who is this person? Mm -hmm. uh, they get the darkness relationship oh. to the dark of the nose. I see. And oh, then I see. So those drawings that you see, like, uh, can you find this person, missing person? Or oh, no, no, like, no, on Facebook, oh. there's a little square that says, 
who is this? You know, oh, you I name see. the person. Oh, How does the computer know that's a face? Oh, facial recognition. Yeah, some, some kind of facial recognition algorithm that has to do with the eyes and the nose. So I do that, and then I, uh, you know, I hate systems, and I hate uh -huh. dogmas, but right. this is so basic to human communication, faces, Goya, Velasquez, mm -hmm. uh, all the great artists. Sure. So I find that proportion, and then I'll get the chin and the hairline, more or less. Uh -huh. So a little bit above that will be the top of the head. So we have the top of the head, we have the chin. Now we have to find the center of the lips here, and they're higher than halfway. So we get a character here, and then uh -huh. from this character, I get the external angle of the eye, which is a bony form, the internal angle of the eye. I should have said the orbit's bony. The tip of the nose is cartilaginous, and the little nostrils are there. And then the jaw is bony. And then uh, the outside of the head is broadest at the top, and then there's the cheekbone coming in, and then the jaw. So we get Sometimes mm -hmm. it looks like Frankenstein, <laughs> you know, with the big head. So we get something like that. But then that's not all. We yes. of course we have to make the nose go in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, and then we have to find the eyeball with the pupil iris, and then we have to hook yeah. up a tendon, and then get the upper lid and the lower lid, etc. Hook up a tendon. Now this is looking kind of silly. But, but that's my favorite part. When you do the eye, you can really. You really to yeah. make them <laughs> look like like your little drawing look like it means something. It, yeah, uh, but I'm not emotional. making it look like you. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, so now there's another one last thing which I call sure? the Munchian mm. uh, facial yeah. form, which is that what we really see from the hairline down is to the cheekbone to the chin here and this to this. It's kind of like the two hands up. The scream. Uh, uh, right, 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 right. So we get a form like this. So what I encourage people to do when they're drawing is to start with the eyes, get the tip of the nose, but just roughly with the eye, the angles, mm -hmm. and then to get the, right. you don't have to measure, but you draw it by hand, get the top and the chin. So that's. Wait, can I, I can actually hold this for you if you want. And oh, so that's okay. I don't know if it's easier. Oh, and the last thing yeah. is that the ears are the same proportion as that basic proportion, and then we get our <laughs> neck down. And then, then using this, you get right. into perspective and everything like that. Right, I see. So that's how you can teach somebody how to draw a face, which they might well, come in yeah. saying, I can never do this, you know. Or and, but they not only should do this, but they should look at master drawings mm -hmm. and see how right. the artists of the past have used the very same forms of. Uh, the depth of darkness within the eye and the darkness at the nose, mm -hmm. and then gone off to sure. get those anatomic things. Mm -hmm. So I didn't bring any of my drawings here because people can see what I've done online at sure. their leisure. And I wanted to talk more about uh -huh. the studio and how I've survived. Right, right. So it was thanks to the landlord who allowed me to come in without freezing a tremendous amount of money and without having any backing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but just but, and then after I was there for two weeks, I had a stroke. Oh. I had a blood clot to the base of my brain. And my people were so good, they kept running the studio. Uh -huh. So he was very surprised yes. that the thing just functioned for weeks and then months. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. slowly I recovered and began to do all the things I had right. to do, which were things like going to the bank with the checks, right. <laughs> laughing all so the way. So you were saying earlier that people don't necessarily pay, that there is, there's a, a free lane for folks who want to study. Well, that's interesting. I do need people to pay something or to monitor yeah. or to help me with work. It's. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and how about the models? How do you choose the models? How do, oh, that's interesting. Because when I started, I thought, where would I get the models? But they find me. Oh, okay. They they want the work, so we have tryouts. Is there anything you're looking at for in the model? Does it matter? Oh, definitely. Tell definitely. me about the tryout. Uh, well, the tryouts are twice a year, and about 30 to 40 people try out, and everyone gets one booking. They don't get paid for trying out, but they mm -hmm. get one booking. Sure. What I look for in a model is um, getting there on time. Mm -hmm. you know, That's a good one. Being mm -hmm. able to be reached by phone or email. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then once we pass that, you know, because if someone's stuff. late or you can't reach them on the phone, you don't have anything. Right, right. Uh, they have to, for me, they have to 
have natural motion mm -hmm. that's right for the body that they have. Sure. It doesn't have to be a beautiful body at all. I, I like um, unusual bodies. I like gravity affecting the body. Sure. And it's easier to draw somebody who's lived mm -hmm. a bit. Rather than you're not necessarily looking for some uh, Romanesque athletic uh, Lenny Reifen well, style we were discussing <laughs> earlier, style of muscled well, we know, have Trump one voter. Of the mo one of the <laughs> monitors <laughs> hires his own yeah. models. And okay. uh, actually, he just published a book, Jordan Mejias, called of art and men, mm -hmm. and uh, that's available. You can okay. find it, Jordan McKee. Is, is there a preference, men or women? Well, as Jordan models? does one man in the afternoon, a woman in the evening, and then the next week reverses. Uh, but but most nude drawings that you see or paintings are of women, and I always wondered if, as a child, is that for purian estrus, or is it the female body just as historically oh, more beautiful to artists to draw? Or? That's it's extremely cultural and. Um, strange in a strange way because the Greeks actually did more, uh, probably more male nudes and enjoyed the male nude, the mm -hmm. classical Greeks. Sure. And even archaic uh, warriors, mm -hmm. uh, many. Yeah, they like that six pack and the yeah, muscled yeah. legs. But the like primitive um, Cro Magnon man and the cave people sure. mostly did. Fulsome, voluptuous females, right. fertility, they and call it. You see it, that in museums. And yeah, so you have on, on people land. committed to fertility, which I said my mother's mm -hmm. family was committed to fertility. Right, right. As, as Roman, uh, Roman, Irish, Catholics. and French Catholics, <laughs> Roman Catholics. <laughs> have as many babies as you can. I know, but I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> you know about that? Yeah, yeah. And um, they, didn't, they weren't too interested in sublimating it into art. They mm -hmm. wanted the real children. Yeah. Uh, but then warrior societies elevate the male. And um, maybe, well, I want well, I, I, you know, in, 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 uh, in both, now I've traveled in Eastern Europe back huh? in the day when it was still the Iron Curtain oh, uh, yeah. on a family trip, and I will never forget the muscled men. They had many of these oh. very realistic paintings of workmen, and you can see their, their shirts, they were busting through their shirts as they wielded well, their hammers and stuff. Yeah. yeah and uh, you saw a lot of that kind of thing. And not to me, well, occasionally women, usually in babushkas, helping. You well, know, <laughs> Yeah. Or they were, during the war in America, what Rosie the Riveter, acting like a Oh, right, right, like muscular, a man. of yeah. course, had a muscular. But uh, I don't, th to me, it makes no difference whether it's a man or a woman. Uh -huh. Of course, now we have the transgenders. Right. So it gets very confusing. Right. And I have Cis to be careful trans. about my adjectives, my, uh, right. what do you call it? Right. Pronoun. So you basically it's 50-50. You have one man, one woman, and they take turns or something. Yeah, like yeah, but if there's a really good model, that model goes on a lot from mm -hmm. my point of view. But Jordan hires... Uh -huh. When he hires models, right. he sets them up so that they. Have you ever had to kick out somebody who was too lascivious? You know, an artist who just like. Well, an artist. Oh, yeah, an artist. Well, I can tell you. Can I be honest about yes, all of this? Yes, you can be as honest. As you the wish. girls and women always come to me and complain of not always, but they'll complain about a lascivious gentleman, or gay woman, or something like that. But the gay men will not tell me anything. Uh -huh. It's between them. They handle it. I get no complaints. Maybe a little story mm -hmm. here and there, but is I it the way the way they stare when they're drawing or something? Oh, like not that. that. No, no, that. I it was something they might say after. Well, a that was break another incident. Yeah, right. One day, uh, Nicolaides, yeah. the um, uh, the great natural way to draw book, which is yeah, uh, came out in forty four or so. Um, one of his suggestions is that before you start to draw, you look at the model. Mm -hmm. Well, one guy came in late one day and started doing Nicolaides. Uh -huh. So he was looking at the model, and the monitor thought he was lascivious. Uh -huh, so I see. the monitor said, you'll have to leave. And he said, oh, no, I'm doing Nicolaides. He said, a likely <laughs> excuse. A likely story. <laughs> and then one of the other guys said, you want to get rid of him? I'll help you throw him out. Oh, so no. when I came to the studio that day, I found the artist outside distraught. All so right. I had to take him back down, and we uh -huh, took care of him. down, <laughs> right. But mostly oh uh, people... That, that rarely happens. If it happens that there's a story about it, it rarely happens. Yeah, but we have. it's very quiet. We don't have music. You don't drink alcohol. You go right. in, you spend three hours drawing, and you learn... Well, a lot of artists just want to practice their art and be left alone, as I said. They don't want instruction. Yeah. But the people who do want to study uh, are, are using the time mm -hmm. to... Yeah, get an idea of the human body as it moves and this, the mm. rib cage against the pelvic girdle and things like that. It I, takes I was going to ask: is, your, is, a, is that anatomy? Did you get your lessons, your knowledge from studying anatomy or just from drawing itself? Well, here um, 
I had very limited experience in, in college at Washington University, 1956 mm -hmm. in St. Louis. In St. Yeah. Louis. But the anatomy teacher, Graves Gladney, was uh, formerly, he had studied to be a doctor and then he mm -hmm. became an illustrator. Yeah. And I remembered a lot of the things he said. So at some point, uh, Judy Fendelman was running the Department of Illustration at Parsons and she said, you're going to take over the anatomy class because I had been trying to teach mm -hmm. a little. But yeah. I, did, I didn't know that much, so I immediately started to study from books and from the Natural History Museum, and I took an oh, Ecorche class. And over, let's see, that would have been six years before my 25 years, over 31 years, I've, I've listened to everything that I could listen to, and I've looked, mm -hmm. looked at Robert Beverly Hale's Anatomy Lessons from the Masters, and sure. just drawing people, I would begin to discover the bones and think from, and I'm an autodidact. I taught myself. Self-taught, right. Self-taught, although, as I said, Graves Gladney was a beginning influence, at least. Right. And um, the, the thing is, you have to just jump in and start drawing to understand the body. And if you're too conceptual, even on the anatomy, it's not going to work for you. By you conceptual, what do you mean? Well, there's a whole thing where the body is explained through proportions and squares. That's what I was going to mention, because we've actually discussed this on this show. I had some guys from Italy who were trying to find out if a sculpture was actually made by Michelangelo by comparing the the lines to the, to the, uh, the I forget what the golden... But the golden section, yeah. Yeah, right, right. And was, and, was it done by Michelangelo? They claimed it was. And just because they claimed it was uh, based on the proportions, the Italian government bought it for 20 million because they, even if it isn't, they don't want anything that people might think is one floating around. Oh, they don't want anyone else to buy it. Right. Even uh -huh. It might be, might not be. Well, so they bought it for $20 million. Uh -huh. Well, actually, the and tradition in, storage. in New York, Philadelphia, uh, yeah. with the various anatomy teachers who have certain traditions and yeah. Is the tradition is to, and Robert Beverly Hale, is to start with these squares and whatever, mm -hmm. but there's a man from Morocco who had studied at L'Ecole des Beaux-Arts in 1986 who is, has come to America. And actually we have free lectures, mm -hmm. Wednesdays at 4.15 at 293 Broom for half an hour. Uh, Saeed uh, Bouftas okay. gives free lectures. We're gonna, we have half a minute, so what's oh, your website? Oh. Min well, there's springstudiosoho.com. My personal website is minervasoho.com. Okay, and people can find out more. And of course, the, the open house is this well, coming? Sunday at 5 to 8, actually. And they should email you beforehand. They should email me to let me know they're coming. And your email is? And the refreshments. Great. And you'll see my artwork. And what's your email? springstudio at earthlink.net. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Minerva oh, Durham, for joining thank us. Thank you. This was so much fun. We'll see you next week. Great show. Come down to the open house on Sunday and learn about how you can draw. <laughs> very good. Very interesting.